It's the Let's Talk Polyamory podcast, where we talk about all things consensual non-monogamy, polyamory, swinging, and all things about how you can have a secure and sexy relationship. Now, here's your hosts, Tara and Andre. Hey, Andre? Good morning, Tara. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Today is Monday, October 1st. No. I had to look. Yeah, it is. My phone says so. I hear it. October 1st. November 1st. No, is it November already? No wonder my, my checks are bouncing and everything. It's November 1st. And it is uh, 10 o'clock? No, 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. But you know what? It could have been 10 o'clock because mm -hmm. something happened to my phone. I don't know if anybody else there in uh, TV listening land had the same experience, but I woke up and the phone, your phone said six when it was seven and it was uh, this yeah. whole fiasco. And then uh, it indicated that it was set for a time zone someplace in America, Kubalanka, <laughs> and 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 a token. America, Ontario. America Anacogan. slash and a token. It was in very Ontario. Weird. In Ontario, yeah, Very and strange. we are not in Ontario right now. No, um, who knows where we are? But <laughs> it was interesting because the time was uh, kind of. Very it was an hour behind, and then yeah. it was reanimated. Yeah, I missed my workout this morning, mm -hmm. and I woke up and my alarm went off, and then it was like an hour before so i went back to bed uh -huh. but anyways but anyway here we are here we are and what time is it in victoria there uh, during i see you good morning good Rainbow. morning and uh yeah i think so, it's four hours well, difference yeah four hours difference yeah four hours behind uh, so early, early riser nice yeah. anyway good to have you with us so today um we want we're gonna it's letter l l so we're talking about limitations liberation and love, and love. in polyamory or open relating not and labia not labia okay. we could talk about labias Nice topic as well. Yeah. Um, so what we'd like you to do today, if you're participating in the live, is tell us what you're feeling mm. currently limited by in your relationships or your life. Limited. Or um, what's what, the new side of that? What you want to be liberated into. Or what into. you've already gained and what kind of mm -hmm. liberations you might have already gained. In the, I can talk about that. Anyway. Yeah. And then the eternal question, uh, what is love to uh, you? What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no <laughs> more. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, everyone yeah. that song. Dun, yeah. But dun. yeah, seriously, what is love? You know, what is my understanding of it? And what is your understanding of it? And mm -hmm. uh, how much do we know each other's uh, love? And also the question of love language came up. We, we have a whole bunch to say about that as well. Okay. But maybe we'll get to that a bit later. Yes, we are. So if mm -hmm. you're new to our lives, welcome. We're glad you're welcome, here. Yes. Or if you're watching yes. the replays, that's awesome as well. So we mm -hmm. do this every week at 11 a.m. Yes. Eastern. You and I think by next week, we'll have switched into yeah, um, Eastern Standard. I think so, right? For oh. uh, some parts of the world, we, <laughs> we do that uh, observation of changing it because of the sunlight, yep. or lack of sunlight. In other parts of the world, they don't. And in some uh, some countries, some provinces, some states, they may and may not do it. So it's a whole mess. And some people are really for it and other people hate it. And awesome. My so producer just gave me a note that was... Uh, <laughs> We need to get on with the show. Let's All right. So if you don't, if you haven't been here before, we do this every week. Um, and the replays are always in the group. In the Let's Talk Poly group has all the all in the guides. The, in the guides. In the guides. Yep, has all the all the replays. Yes. If you're in TNA or you're joining us from our Let's Talk Poly page, you can if you join the group, you'll have access mm -hmm. to all those free lives. Great. And, or on YouTube and soon to be Netflix too, I heard, right? Oh, Netflix. We're gonna be on Netflix. I think so. I think there's, News uh, to me. there's ideas about maybe expanding. Show and we should our own Netflix show. Yeah, we should. Amazing. So if you haven't Shooting already, stars. if you haven't already registered for a right sizing jealousy workshop, it's November 11th. It's being mm -hmm. done through ships. So we'll make sure we drop the link in the comments here, but it's also in the announcement. Everything. All right, let's get on with it. All right. So today we're talking about making the shift in your relationships uh, yes. from being ones of limitations to ones where you feel liberated and loved, mm -hmm. and where where needs, wants, and desires are met. So, yeah, so I thought we'd start first by talking about what does it mean to, what are limitations? Right. Awesome. Okay, so what are limitations? They're uh, kind of uh, restrictions, limiting rules or circumstances that we yeah. might have, right? Restraints. Uh, restraints, yeah. Um, and they may restrict the size or the amount, the occurrence, the intensity, the extent mm -hmm. of things, right? Yeah, so exactly. all these ideas that might limit us in some way. Yeah, we might feel constricted. Mm -hmm. Like, I think when I'm feeling limited, I feel smaller as a human sure, yeah. and you may feel small in your relationships right yeah you might feel as though you're not fully uh, living up to your potential or mm -hmm. your desires your expectations all those things may feel as though uh, you are being limited in them or you are limited mm -hmm. as a participant yeah. yeah so how do we become limited in our in all these things 
How do we become? Yeah. Why, why do we have limitations on ourselves? Because probably when we're children, right, we don't feel limited, oh, in, right. you yeah, know, but sure. how do we, how do we like grow into, I guess, for lack of better words, our limitations? You, you know, it's an interesting thing, right? Because uh, a lot of the limitations that we might have, those perceptions of have kind of been transferred onto us, right? Our parents, our culture or whatever may have given us certain limitations and some limitations might be very useful, very healthy, right? We don't necessarily want a toddler who is driving a truck down the highway. We're limited to only those who are graduated and licensed. So maybe it is good to have some limitations, mm -hmm. but what limitations might we bring forward that might be less serving as to what we're wanting? How can we discard some of those limitations mm -hmm. and have a happier, healthier, more enjoyable mm -hmm. experience? Did you answer my question? No, I don't think I did. I asked you, how do we become limited in our lives? Well, it might be uh, things that we <laughs> inherit, or we might have our own uh, limiting mm -hmm. beliefs that we subscribe to, right? We might think, well, for example, I didn't think that I'd be able to be in a polyamorous, open, relating, swinging, uh, whatever you want to call it, relationship. I didn't think that other people mm -hmm. were, well, I did, first of all, I didn't even know of it as a possibility, but I didn't think that it would be acceptable to others, let alone find participants who would do that. Right. So I was subscribing to my own fears, my own limitations, mm -hmm. and I would then subscribe to what I thought was the model that I had to describe to because mm -hmm. I was limited in my exploration, my understanding, mm -hmm. my beliefs of them, and then uh, it was not well suited. So my limiting beliefs were working against me. I was right. not allowing them. But we get those limiting beliefs because we are we somehow are taught it in our life yeah, yeah. either directly or through observation in our yeah. lives so family culture religion right. education and like what you said like heteronormativity and sure. monogamy as being the norm is something that's pretty well ingrained in us and i think it's yeah. the thing that people often even when they are in open relationships or open relating polyamory it's something that's still kind of sometimes on your shoulder mm -hmm. like it's still there and some of what we do i think and, and i put myself in this category as well is sort of tainted by that idea right. like we feel like something that we, we're doing is maybe wrong or not yeah. you know well for sure i mean you you uh, you mentioned that idea of uh, heteronormativity normativity or uh, monogamy and yeah, those seem to be not only the right ways, the so-called right ways, but anything outside of that is considered to be wrong or mm -hmm. immoral, right? Yes, mm -hmm. they are imprinted upon us, absolutely. Um, they may be directly imprinted from yeah. our family or our society, or they may be even archaic and historically imprinted as a society. We really subscribe to them and think that it is the only way to be, uh, but we can go beyond that, right? We mm -hmm. can figure out what works best for us as individuals and be able to Exactly. come to an understanding of a better way of being i think the, the the belief that i run into a lot and and you know i'd say it again of myself that i had is that i can't have what i want mm -hmm. like what i want is not available to me so it's available to other people but not for me that as you say it like that it makes me think of the uh the idea of the universe of abundance mm. or the universe of scarcity right so uh, can i believe in the abundance can i uh, am i entitled to receive these things am i uh, okay to get them or is there some type of perversion that exists that says, well, no, like, you know, you are meant to be small. You're meant to be poor, whether it's financially or emotionally or whatever mm -hmm. way. So can I really be accepting that uh, it is out there for me and I can simply accept it if I'm willing to accept it? Am I able to think mm -hmm. that it's valid as a consideration, right? Mm -hmm. Which kind of goes back to my idea of monogamy, where I didn't know that there was any other way of being, that I did not think that it would be viable or acceptable, mm -hmm. not only to other people, but to myself, well, other people might have been living it and thought it was perfectly fantastic, but I had my own limiting beliefs that kind of uh, prohibited it, negated mm -hmm. the possibility of it. And then what happened to you? Like, do you want to share a bit of a personal story here? Sure. Or? Well, uh, <laughs> kind of the, the, the last serious relationship that I was in, uh, it wasn't working very well. I wasn't getting my needs satisfied and I was trying to conform to the relationship the way that I thought I ought to be. And uh, I was then taking the energies that were frustrated and channeling them into uh, some things that were productive like work i would just throw myself into work which was great or other ways that were not quite as acceptable and i was being unethical because i was having a relationship outside of my relationship i had an affair i cheated mm -hmm. and that was not a good way to be for the person for any of mm -hmm. us involved right so mm -hmm. it didn't sit well with me what i came to understand was that i could be more open and transparent about it and get more fulfilling Mm -hmm. relationship 
Right. I became liberated by understanding that I could uh, be ethically open about it and see that it was viable, that there were other people who also subscribed to this idea and that it would be much more, a, gratifying, a much better fit for me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we limit ourselves because of what we think, sometimes what we think our partners want too, oh, yeah, what they expect sure. of, we think is expected. What? And absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I thought, wow, there's no way that anybody's ever going to, you know, have that same desire, those same feelings or the same philosophies as I would. Mm -hmm. And then we come to find out, well, actually, yeah, I, I like that too. Yeah, Isn't we were sort of lucky to have, have come together with it without things getting too far. Like it was pretty early in our relationship that we realized that we wanted this to be like, you know, the way we are. But, I mean, something other than monogamous. Right. But then we slowly, slowly develop that over mm. time, which is what, as you do, right? Well, yeah, we were able to develop it over time because we communicated openly about it, mm. right? We'd say, well, how would you feel about this? Or how would you think of that? But mm. it is interesting the way we came across it. And we didn't <laughs> come across it in a discussion, per se. No. Uh, we were early in our relationship, <laughs> and we were, uh, you know, I'm, by the way, uh, for those of you who don't know, my mother and a couple of my other uh, family relatives are members of this, and I think it's fantastic, but I will say uh, how we came to be with this. So <laughs> we, we were early on in our relationship, and we were doing a Was rather... Was a trigger warning? Well, not, not a big deal, perhaps. <laughs> but we were, uh, we were engaged in a rather complicated sex position, and I said, you know, it would be great if I had another set of hands. And kind of to my surprise, you said, yeah, that'd be fantastic. And I said, like, wow, really? Like, you'd be into that? And you're like, yeah, I think I might. So... Uh, we finished doing what we were doing somehow and then, uh, <laughs> without that not, extra set of hands <laughs> and, yeah exactly and then not long after that we uh, like that night like probably within minutes we jumped on <laughs> to uh, the computer and created a profile for ourselves and set about to find that and the rest is as i say is history yeah uh yeah so yeah. anyway but so some people have heard that story right, before well, but, but we kind of it's a good into story it. it always makes me smile it does and it's and it's cute in a way mm -hmm. but it's interesting because we did not set about to talk about it. And we're always Correct. advocating mm -hmm. communication, right? Mm -hmm. We wanna uh, try and get to a position where we are able to, and create a position where we're able to speak about things openly, honestly, let it be known what our position is, and then hear what the other person has, you know, either mm -hmm. uh, where we can meet in that, or where there is uh, some type of, I guess, almost discourse where there's not that overlap, but we can find compromise in it if we're so inclined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So talking about it is the ideal way, right? To find out what the uh, limitations might be and what the liberations might be. Mm -hmm. So when we were able to announce that we would both be interested in it, it felt very liberating. I was like, wow, like here's something that I could do that I've been wanting to do, mm -hmm. but might've been too afraid to ask for, mm -hmm. right? So I let it be known. I became liberated in that announcement. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't yeah. always come that simply. No. And you might be in a relationship, in a long-term relationship yeah. sometimes where you've been living in a position of limitation your partner doesn't know and then you may have some things that you're feeling as a result of it right. like resentment yeah. and that sort of thing you may right. shut down act out right. feel isolated mm -hmm. that sort of thing yeah so i'm gonna so what do you feel li limited by oh aubrey's saying religion definitely shaped my core mm -hmm. beliefs as a child and younger person since leaving in 2013. I was shocked how many things about myself restricted due to this shame imposed in my former faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since then it's been unlearning. Yes, me making the rules, choosing my values and life path. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, liberation. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, pretty good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, yeah, what do you feel limited by? Um, and I think we're gonna get into what to do if you are in a relationship because like i said it doesn't always come easy mm -hmm. in a situation like we had mm -hmm. to bring it up when right. when it's something a long-term relationship so, where you haven't been talking about it or that okay. sort of thing so what you're saying is if you've already been in a relationship and it's been kind of uh the, the foundation has already been set out you have mm -hmm. certain agreements and parameters already mm -hmm. how do you revisit that and how mm -hmm. do you open those things up mm -hmm. we're not going to get into detail we're going to mm -hmm. talk about a couple things but i think that's where i think a lot of people struggle is that when they start off from a position of monogamy even if it's in a new relationship but i think it's harder if it's a longer established relationship and you discover things about yourself either around your sexuality eroticism mm -hmm. or your relational diversity like how you want to be in relationships and then having then to bring that up and and what that feels to the other person if it's not something that they had considered previously. 
You know, though, uh, I want to like, I don't want to just poo poo on limitations as though they're a terrible thing because sometimes <laughs> they're put in place and they might make us feel uh, a certain sense of security, perhaps, right? They might yeah. like some you know, healthy boundaries, healthy parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's interesting, we're speaking to a couple not long ago and they were telling us uh, they've been lifestyle swinger, polyam, open relating. <laughs> open, uh, for some time, but they were announcing how, and it's not uncommon, that they had certain agreements, certain limitations put in place initially. For example, they were not having penetrative sex, or they're not having kissing, mm -hmm. uh, tongue kissing, mm -hmm. and that made Oh, them, just tongue kissing or just kissing? I think it was tongue kissing. Well, they kiss on the cheek. They're, kissing they're on French, the cheek right? is fine, yeah, yes, but, but not, we're not talking about kissing. intimate kissing, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that these uh, limitations, if you will, were mm -hmm. put in place because they were new to it mm -hmm. and not yet familiar with how they might feel about it so they made these agreements they would limit their interaction with these people so these were healthy limitations that they had come to with mm -hmm. agreement both of them feeling that it would make them feel more secure because they were still new to each other new to the relationship and all that in time they were able to talk about it and they both decided that they were going to amend those limitations they were going to find another way of being but the initial offering was to kind of offset some of their feelings of uh, discomfort discomfort or insecurity mm -hmm. right the question is though how do we come to these agreements where we feel as though it is compromised out of desire as opposed to a restriction that might lead to some form of resentment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah there's a bit of a difference of mm -hmm. making some let's call them rules i don't like the term rules at the beginning but if they're mutually agreed upon at for some reason then that's one thing but then if they aren't and they're enacted to address a fear mm -hmm. and it's an ongoing thing then sometimes those are the things that have to be looked at like right. how do we you know how do we remove those fears exactly. so we're going to get a little bit into a little bit about that but let's move on to liberation okay let's ah, talk about liberation i love being liberated so what do you, what do you mean by liberation um i think liberation for me is a bit more is the freeing yourself from your limits Mm -hmm. So freedom from limits, thoughts, or behaviors. So being liberated, moving from a place where you might be feel enslaved, even mm. not in a, not in a sexy good way, by your um, by your limitations. Right. So there's a release of some sort. Mm -hmm. So you what do you are, think? Uh, you know, when I think about the idea of the liberation, I think about uh, really returning or coming to a position of my authentic self, mm. where I feel as though. I'm not necessarily having to restrict myself or feel as though I have to curtail my behavior, but one that is always in consideration of the other for sure. But one that feels as though it is more the way I might uh, be natural. Mm -hmm. you know? So I feel liberated to be my true self. So if I am enslaved emotionally, not in a good kinky way, but the other <laughs> way, uh, I am not free to express myself. Whereas when I feel liberated, I am feeling secure in my own position emotionally, physically, sexually, whatever, and able to really be my authentic self. Hmm. When do you feel most liberated? Can I ask you that question? Okay. Is that a hard question? It's well, not in the notes. <laughs> it's, it's not in the notes. You know, um, not to, uh, it's not lip service at all. And it's not because you asked me, but this relationship has made me feel most liberated. I feel like I'm able to uh, openly express myself in this. Um, my my girlfriend, Arzu, I feel very uh, liberated when I'm with her as well. My, my mother. I mean, there are other places, but I guess when I am, uh, you know, running up a mountain and I'm by myself in my thoughts, I'm able to really be who I am with that. But at the same time, I am uh, hypersensitive to my own thoughts and feelings, and I still become aware of whatever limitations I am imposing upon myself. What mm. I'm subscribing to, you know, the idea that I am not enough of this or too much of that, whatever those limiting mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. What about yourself? Where where do you feel most liberated? Mm, that's a good question. A good um, question. I, I think I feel most liberated. I do feel liberated in this relationship. From mm -hmm. So from a relationship perspective, I definitely feel liberated because I feel like we can oh, all of a sudden got dark. <laughs> there must cloud. be a cloud. Um, yeah, I feel... Yeah, I feel like I could be myself and I can talk about anything with you. Okay. And that's a big shift for me in, mm. in a relationship. I've, I've always felt in some way that I had to be careful or be, I don't know, I was more fearful mm -hmm. in my relationships in the past. So what do you think is different that makes you feel less fearful? And how could you be more of yourself now in this? What, what's the difference then? 
I think because I know with certainty that I can communicate and say what it is I need to say to you and you will listen and from a place of understanding mm -hmm. and wanting to see where we could go from there. Interesting. I think part of it's your therapeutic back. It's your personality for sure, but it's also, I think your therapeutic background mm -hmm. and ability to not take things personally. I think that's the big difference is that I can say things to you, how I'm feeling, and you're not going to take it to mean like, if I'm not feeling desire or something like that, you're not going to say, Oh, I'm not, you, you might not, you're not going to take it to me. Oh, that means I'm not desirous. Like, you know, you don't make it about you. You don't make personalize it, it. You don't personalize it. Right. Thank you. Having a hard time <laughs> communicating that. See, <laughs> that's what I like. Yeah. And then I think I feel liberated too when I'm doing something creative. So when I'm doing mm -hmm. my aerial or moving or dancing or being with people, I feel the most like I can, like my people. Like sometimes mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm with my humans. Right. Like we were with some new friends that we have this weekend. And I just feel like I could just be me and I didn't have to be anything else. And I think that's when I feel most liberated, when I'm not thinking about what right. I'm doing, not questioning it. And it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. But, you know, as you said that, it makes me think back to uh, my level of joy, right? So if I mm -hmm. have a, a high level of enjoyment, I'm feeling free to go out and do that. I'm feeling, yeah, those restrictions come up. So I guess when I'm feeling less joy, is it because I'm feeling more restricted? My feelings or the limitations prevent me from feeling that. Mm -hmm. So maybe that can be uh, the barometer. Maybe it's part of the criteria we use to determine, am I feeling liberated or am I feeling limited? Mm -hmm. And you can do that both for yourself personally, but also in your relationships. Oh, I got, I got ahead of ourselves. So now love, love, uh, love. Yeah. What is it to be, what is love? What is it to be in love? I feel you, like- You know, that's such a great question because people always <laughs> say, I love you or I love them or whatever, but yes, what is your understanding of love? And what is my understanding of love? And how much overlap is there? You know, how do we really uh, know the sentiment, the feeling associated with that word, that symbol that we use you know, mm -hmm. call love. it's sometimes you say to me well what does it mean when you say i love you and like what are you feeling and i'm like i'm feeling like this mm. <laughs> that's what i'm feeling right so like then, i can't describe it in words but i want to know what those <laughs> words are oh we got uh, some weird focus thing so what what are those words meaning what is the emotion that you're feeling what mm -hmm. is the thought that you're having at mm -hmm. that time connection mm -hmm. attraction desire connectedness connectedness Mm -hmm. But I want to talk about also uh, the other ideas of love connected, you know, the, the fear of love, right? Mm -hmm. Where uh, we might be saying that we are open relating and swinging in that, and that's wonderful. But then there's also another component called polyamory, which means many loves. And mm -hmm. we might want to be with each other in loving ways. But what happens when somebody really catches feelings for us, when they fall in love with us? Mm. Are we welcoming it? Are we like, oh my God, like, you know, I wanted to interact with them. I wanted to be in a loving way with them, but I wasn't quite prepared for them to be in love with me. Or if I fall in love with somebody or you mm -hmm. fall in love with me, am I willing and able to entertain the idea that we have this kind of relationship, but you might have uh, some profound, deep, real love relationship with mm -hmm. somebody else? What does it mean? How does it affect mm -hmm. us? Where will we be able to sit with that? Is it a comfortable thing or is it an uncomfortable? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then for you or for the other per and for the other for, people for that sure. you're in all relationships. The, yeah, all the parties involved. And then I also think about uh, love in the aspect of uh, codependence. Uh, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So does uh, I like that you love me because I feel connected. I like that you love me because I feel, you know, wanted. I like that you love me because I feel that and it points back to all the needs that I'm wanting that you're fulfilling, but is that in a way uh, codependent? Is uh, it, is it, you know, can I be uh, secure in my own position and then allow for your love or do I need your love? Cause mm. people often say, I need your love. I need you to, to love me in this way. And mm -hmm. it is uh, perhaps filling a narcissistic need or whatever mm -hmm. it is, but, and it's fine, but let's be aware of it so we can make the determination. Am I uh, able to be secure in your love? So what happens is very often is people start opening up their relations and they're like, well, what happens if they catch feelings with somebody else? What happens mm. if they become uh, sexually and romantically, emotionally involved with the other person? Where's that going to leave me? Mm -hmm. And the other person might say, well, you know, don't worry, baby, I'll never leave you, which we don't know. Yes. <laughs> but but uh, somebody said the other day, and I thought it was fantastic. Uh, they said that they became secure when their partner said to them, I can't imagine my life without you. Mm -hmm. And that was... 
gratifying to them, but also it indicated to the other person that they loved them and didn't want to have a life without them. And I think that made them feel more secure in that way. So it's, mm-hmm. it's quite fantastic, quite beautiful. But just being aware of what our needs and desires are and where do we sit with those things. Because mm-hmm. sometimes one of the rules people make when they're first opening up is don't fall in love with somebody. <laughs> it's like, How do you control uh-huh. it? And don't let them fall in love with you. Don't be too adorable on your date now. Yes. <laughs> And yeah, and what does that mean? And what does and, and why is that threatening? Can right. we have the capacity to love more people? Well, and I that's what I believe is that we can. But that's a tennis analogy again, mm-hmm. right? Oh, so the tennis. Uh, I love you, you love me. Don't let anybody else fall in love with you. So here it is. Uh, we go up for those of you who don't know the tennis analogy, and I'm sure everybody <laughs> by now has heard me say it a thousand times, but I'll say it really quickly. You and I like playing tennis. We decided we we're gonna play tennis together. And Monday we go play tennis and then we had a good time. I say, hey, what are you doing Wednesday? We'll play tennis again. We go out and play tennis on Wednesday. And then I say, hey, Saturday, you know, you want to get together and play tennis? We play tennis again. And then at one point I said, Tara, I like playing tennis with you so much. I prefer that you don't play tennis with anybody else. It would be absurd. But am I threatened by the fact that you might be playing with other tennis partners? Mm -hmm. Probably not. I mean, you play tennis with me because you want to play tennis with me. Well, why would it be any different with love? So being Mm -hmm. polyamorous, being open like that, we are saying, well, I feel secure enough in my love that I could imagine that you could love somebody else. Mm-hmm. I think it's uh, the 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 aha moment of monogamy as a model not really working, saying that uh, I'm going to subscribe to this belief that you are going to be everything for me for all of eternity, and I will have no other desires. Mm-hmm. I will have no other expectations, and that if I have any desires, expectations, I know that you'll fulfill all of them forever and ever and ever. What an unrealistic expectation and what a burden to put on the other person I and what it. a and what a, a lack of, uh, you know, it's just it's a fallacy to me that I can no longer subscribe to. So I think that you could be out and love somebody, but still desire to come back to me and want to be with me. And that would be really the demonstration of love that you choose to be with me. Mm-hmm. You want to be with me. I love that. We choose over and over again. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say, and we know it not to be true that you can only love one person. We know it. We have friends, we have family, we have colleagues, pets. We love all these people in different ways. And I think when we first started dating and we started into non-monogamy, I was actually a bit intimidated by your love of your friend and um, your other girlfriend and found it a bit threatening. Mm -hmm. And then I got to know her and then, you know, I love her too. And then you realize that, nothing your love from her for her does not take away anything from me in fact it gives something to me it gives me an extra person to love and like that that coming back to me thing but i hope also that uh when i'm with you i am present with you and you feel my desire to be with you you feel my Mm -hmm. presence with you right my love for you Uh, so just because i love somebody as well doesn't mean that the love I'm going to have for you is going to be limited or only, Mm -hmm. you know, circumstantial, that it is all going forever. Mm -hmm. Drang is asking, why is it a burden, a burden to put on someone else? Being all those things. Asking that other person to be all those things because you get past the delusional egoism. (laughs) Right. So I might, you know, initially I might have this, this idea that uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, be in this mono relationship where uh, they are going to be my everything all the time. And it seems like it's a burden to ask that of the other person. Mm -hmm. Just like if you were to ask that of me, Mm -hmm. that I should be able to be, uh, you know, your end all. Mm -hmm. And what happens if I tire of it? Or you fall short in one area of your expectation. Yeah. I think that's more what you mean. I think so. Unlearning possessive love was an early part of my wife's polyamory journey. Yeah. We can't claim another human like that. Love is endless. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's been so liberating. Awesome. Yes. It's interesting that um, often when working, I'm working with couples, mm-hmm. one of the things they say, one of the things I ask, mm-hmm. which is, you know, some people say, oh, I can't believe you asked that. Like, what makes you want to stay together? Mm. And they often say, because I love them. Right. And then I'm always wanting to dig into like, well, what does that mean to you? And what, you know, what might you do differently because of that? love? Mm-hmm. Anyways, it's so interesting. Yeah. Love is used. Yeah. It's hard to describe, I think. Love. And then, uh, well, we talked about that, codependence, we talked about that. Okay, cool. 
Oh, I was thinking, it's funny, when I was preparing for this, um, for those of you who are close in age to us, you may be familiar with um, the song, uh, What is Love by Howard Jones. I loved Howard Jones in mm -hmm. the 80s. And so I looked up the lyrics because I thought it'd be interesting and found out there was some really poignant points mm -hmm. there. He says, what is love anyway? Does anybody love anybody anyway? Can anyone love anyone so much that they will never fear, mm -hmm. never worry, never be sad? The answer is you cannot love this much. Nobody can. I don't know. Do you believe that? That you can love anybody so much that you'll never fear? Yeah. Uh, it, to me, the initially uh, the initial word that comes to mind is delusional. <laughs> but I suppose it, it is possible. Um, but I don't know that it would be possible for me. So he says the answer is they cannot love this much. Nobody can. That's why I don't mind doubting. And then, it, then this was a part I really liked. And maybe love is letting people be just what they want to be. The door must always be left unlocked. To love when circumstance may lead someone away from you and not spend time doubting. Right. So you leave the door unlocked. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really good um, analogy, analogy yeah. for polyamory right. is that you leave the door unlocked and that they continue to come back to you. Even, you, you know, you do the thing that could potentially lead them away sure. from you, but they still come back. They come back by choice, uh, which is kind of like, you know, in marriage, if I'm not mistaken, there is such a thing called a marriage contract, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And it is uh, legally binding and such. Uh, in our relationship, you're free to go at any time. And you do go. And then you desire to come back and you mm -hmm. do come back. Mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I think that demonstration makes me feel secure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we covered a few of these things. So um, Aubrey's saying there's always going to be fear sometimes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we can talk about the fears and find out uh, what are they connected to, right? Where... Are we feeling these fears and how might we come to a position of greater security to minimize the amount of fear? They may not ever completely uh, vanish, mm -hmm. but we can definitely gain security by talking about them and finding out what are they really connected to? What are the things that we might be able to do to uh, increase our sense of security? Mm -hmm. I'm seeing Drang is saying egoistic, delusional concept of self. If one of us transcends to the luminous self, then love from there is timeless. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So then how can we make the shift from being limited to being liberated in mm -hmm. our relationships and ourselves? So we covered some of these things, but let's repeat them for okay. a good measure. Let's do it. So number one is um, understanding what's limiting us, both for ourselves personally and in our relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the big one. I, I know when I work with people um, in my practice, um, that this is the first thing we all tackle first. And it's probably the thing that takes the longest is like, what, what are my limiting beliefs? Like mm -hmm. you talked about earlier, like what are the stories I'm telling myself about the way things are, the ifs, ands, buts, cannots, should nots, would nots, and all those things. So, and then in our relationships, looking at what limitations might be in place for those. Okay. You fixing your tie? Yeah, it's bothering me. It's bothering you. It's so cute. I love that one, the plaid. So, uh, the the do we move on to living limitlessly? Sure. So number two is living limitlessly. Right. So what do you mean by that, living limitlessly? Ah, limitless. well, I'm gonna steal um a steal. a quote okay. from Thrive Global. And we can put the mm -hmm. link to that article. Thrive Global. Right. They had five things that you can do to live limit, li limitlessly, but a limit. A limitless life is one where you live according to your values mm -hmm. and achieve all your goals, which are set by you. So your values and goals, which you set by you, not by society right. or individuals around you. But, okay. So right there, the, the living, the values. So I think of myself as a social butterfly, and I think that I should be able to love as many people as possible and that they should love me also. And sometimes I think that I uh, want to, kind of turn down the volume of that because, well, I have this idea that maybe it's not so acceptable to other people. Mm -hmm. So I'm not living those values. So when I am really living those values, I am more confident in being able to express that I want to love many people and that I want the love of many people. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, that is living my value when I mm -hmm. allow for that. And getting an understanding of what, what you value the most, like what are the things you value mm -hmm. in your life, you know? And setting goals. I, I love the goals, goal setting. It's one of my things. I think it's always good to have something that you're striving for and to strive even beyond what you believe is possible. 
um, because I feel like you're you're more likely to get what you want if you strive even farther. Well, you know, uh, setting the goals reminds me of the cure, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing what it is you're wanting, finding a way of getting it, getting it, and being happy having it. Mm -hmm. But for many people, yes, setting the goals is the hardest part. They don't necessarily know what it is they're wanting. But uh, we would ask you then to uh, kind of look introspectively and find that out. And if you don't have the capacity to do that, if you don't know yet how to do that, then uh, find someone you can speak to. Find, uh, you know, an awesomest coach or a <laughs> psychotherapist and discover what it is that would really turn you on. What are the things that you're really wanting? What are those goals? Yeah, yeah. What, what you want to be liberated into. Like, yeah. imagine it, you know. Right. One of the exercises and things we do in our program is uh, relationship vision. Mm -hmm. And imagining mm -hmm. what your, you know, your life, your ultimate relationships could be in right. your life. And sometimes it's really hard for people to do because they're like they layered on top of that is often those limitations that they have for themselves and what they think that they can truly have. So you can also, like I said, set relationship goals and aspirations. But but I like the way that uh, in setting those goals, you might be uh, looking at, are they uh, limited? Are we already imposing restrictions on them? Mm -hmm. Or are they just goals that we could uh, think that we're able to obtain? So we might not yet believe that they're obtainable, but that shouldn't necessarily stop us, mm -hmm. right? Because we won't be limited in what we're putting as the goal. Mm -hmm. So can we uh, set goals that are beyond our limitations? Yeah, I used to, um, your mom just lent me a book called like write, something about write it down. I wish I had brought it here. It's mm -hmm. over there. Um, but I used to do this um, when it, my marriage broke down in 2000. I started a practice annually of writing, um, doing some journaling one day uh, yeah. in a year and then writing down goals. And I would make these what I thought were these most aud audacious goals, like huge goals. And then um, come to find, because I wrote them down, that I actually took steps like I didn't do it consciously, but I actually took steps towards those things. Mm -hmm. And by the next year, often all if, if not more, those were achieved. Oh, now, not that I'm saying you should just close the book and forget about mm -hmm. them. Um, but if you can bring them into your consciousness and by writing them down, but then also right. making steps to do it, I think you're more likely to get it. So make big, big goals. Yeah, I'd be interested to know uh, what those goals looked like. And did you exceed those goals? Were those goals big enough? Right. So when we're first coming out of the gate, uh, maybe the goals are reasonable or sort of, you know, the right size. But are they big enough? Are we dreaming big mm -hmm. enough? Are we really going to assess it or are we uh, limiting our goals? And can we look back after and say, wow, like that's all I was asking for? Like, you know, I've got the whole universe <laughs> that is there waiting for me. I think the first year I did it, my goals were kind of small. Mm -hmm. And then after the second year, and then I realized, oh, I got all those goals. That's okay. I'm going to make them crazy. So then I, my goal was always, every time I made them, was to make them even wilder right, right, than right. I imagined. And uh, I thought it was so exciting that um, I, one of my goals was to have a solo art show. And I thought that this was so impossible and yeah. out of reach. And then just did it. The only limitations we know are the ones we subscribe ourselves to. Exactly, exactly. So that was number two, living limitlessly. So setting goals and aspirations and planning to continue moving forward. Okay, number three, setting agreements or intentions mm -hmm. or aspirations right. in your relationships that support being limitless for all involved rather than limiting. Mm -hmm. So similar to the other one, but more in your relationship. And I thought um, uh, making compromising, because sometimes we can't, you have to do some compromise course, in your yes. relationships, right? For sure. And work to, you well, might need to wanna, work towards something. Right. And we want to, in making the compromise, we want to be considerate, right? Both in what we are agreeing to and what we are being, uh, considerate of ourselves and of our partner partners. Mm -hmm. We want to find those things. So yes, there, there will be a need for some compromise in the agreements, but it should not be too far where we feel as though it's going to lead to resentment, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to be open and honest about what it is we're wanting and mm -hmm. not wanting. Or have a plan of moving to that to that place. Perhaps so. If it's some if something new or someone's new to something, right. it's like having time, you know, and Adjusting setting up and, and checking that. in. Checking and, in, yeah. Well, our business meetings, right? We, we <laughs> always uh, suggest that we have regular check-ins and find out, you know, how are we doing? What's Let's take stock. What's working? What's working less? And how might we be able to uh, really, you know, celebrate the things that are working, but also be willing and able to address the things that are working less. Mm -hmm. I'm smiling because I'm thinking that you called a business meeting the other day because we just um, got into a new place and there were some things that you agreements you wanted to have in place for the living the living situation. The quality of life issues. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
So number three was setting agreements and, ten and intentions. You didn't mention the 60-40 rule. Oh, 60-40 rule. Yes, tell, tell about that. Well, in the compromise, uh, in the uh, compromise of the agreements and, and limitations and things like that. So uh, we are wanting to set about whether we are old or new in this, we want to make sure that uh, the compromise, and this goes both ways, as the recipient and the offer of these compromises and these agreements, are we honoring the 60-40 rule, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, a 60-40 rule, we are playing uh, cops and robbers with our <laughs> little brother. And if we're always going to be the, the cop and always arresting <laughs> the poor little guy and putting him in jail and beating him in the whole deal, uh, it's satisfying for us, but maybe less satisfying over time for them. And if they're not getting mm -hmm. enough in return, they may lose interest. So uh, we know in psychology that there's a 60-40 balance, that we have to give enough to make the other person still interested. So when we are making these compromises, these demands, let's try and imagine what it's like to be on the other side of it as well. And can we get enough of balance where it's of interest to the other person? And when they're interested in playing cops and robbers, well, we're going to be playing cops and robbers more often, and it'll be satisfying for us as well. So we want to give, uh, not just because we're going to get those back, we want to give out of generosity mm -hmm. and love, hopefully. But if that falls short, then keep in mind, it's got to be, amicable for both. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's just not going to be not so fantastic, unless that is your relationship, unless you're totally like, you know, which might work too, but <laughs> in the majority of cases, it's 60-40, uh, please. Yes. Well, I was giggling because I was thinking back to our last week's comment uh, topic, which was on kink and thinking about dom-sub relationships and saying that someone might want you to be beat on them and be submissive the entire time. Sure. But they are consenting that. They're in agreement with they're that. And they're actually it. getting their... Mm -hmm needs met now, right? They're being gratified in that yeah. sense. Yeah, and it might not, it might not continue to be, even if you're in that situation, you may not continue, you may not feel that way. Right. Like things are imbalanced. But yeah, for sure. I was thinking about when you're saying, um, one of the questions in our relationship visioning is, uh, what do you want to give in a relationship? And what do you want to receive in a relationship? Mm -hmm. So right. what are the things that we ask people to ponder on? So mm -hmm. knowing what it is you're wanting. Knowing what it is you're wanting. Yeah. So number four, I think. Being, being able to communicate. Exactly. Understanding what love means to those we are in relationships so how do we know what love is between us mm -hmm. you know what is my understanding of love and what is yours right so, communicating it. right so really trying to identify uh what is at play in our desires for it what are we getting out of it what are we wanting about how what might we be able to offer mm -hmm. back from it but yeah being able to try and uh, really come into tune with what it means for us and communicate that. And mm -hmm. also to be able to hear what the mm -hmm. other person is saying about it. Right? Yeah. It's great to be able to, to announce it, mm -hmm. but are you able to hear it? Ah, yes. Listening, active listening. Active listening sure. Yes. And we, you mentioned at the beginning, but one of the things um, is understanding how people receive love mm -hmm. and give love. And um, we often refer to love languages. There's a quiz online. The love languages. But somebody in our group asked us actually to talk about that today and found out through one of our other members that the author is known to be very homophobic mm -hmm. and was really disappointed to, yeah. to hear that because it was something love language is something I often I often get my clients to do the quiz because it's good to understand what their sure. and uh, it, partners are where they're coming from. Right. And it's become uh, such commonplace. It's just part of our lexicon today that people use speak of love language and people kind of get it. But then now we uh, come to understand that this author was or is or perhaps was uh, rather homophobic and that does not fit well in our community mm -hmm. of inclusion mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily negate the idea that what they said these philosophies these tenets of love language are negated mm -hmm. because we don't necessarily uh, mm -hmm. subscribe to their political ideology mm -hmm. doesn't mean that what they were putting forward in the love languages is invalid in fact, they still are valid, but we mm -hmm. take exception to that. Maybe we yeah. don't, I guess it's it's you just don't want to pack pockets of somebody who lives that kind of um, reality. Right. I don't know. Well, it's uh, a tough one. We'll pray for them and <laughs> they become <laughs> enlightened. Oh my gosh, you're so funny. We'll, we'll see them as sick and suffering. Okay, so number four, understanding what love means to those we are in relationships with and to ourselves, obviously. Very and then, charming. and then number five. I love this one, and I think you alluded to this earlier, is make happiness your business, not anyone else's. And what we mean by that is being happy and in love and loving yourself oh, yeah. well, and, it's, and getting it from within. And that's a really hard thing. I think it might even be impossible to receive love if you don't love yourself. Although some people would argue that and they'd say, you know, uh, that maybe you come from a place of, uh, unfortunately, like you've been abused or 
bigger mm -hmm. things and you might not feel that level of stuff. And then we have to love that person until they start loving themselves. But really, it is our own homework, our own job to really start loving ourselves. And that comes back to the earlier idea of what we're talking about. How do we love ourselves? By doing you know, esteem of blacks and all those things. So we build mm -hmm. the love within ourselves so that way we can feel more secure and we can receive the love of others and we can give mm -hmm. love to others as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So finding out what, what lights you up. Right. What lights you up. Playing hockey. Playing hockey. <laughs> yeah, playing hockey, but also... Uh, sex. Sex, for sure. <laughs> but, but, but being in loving relations with people, platonic otherwise, just... Uh, that human connection, mm -hmm. feeling of though as though I am of service, uh, hitting it, getting you know, knowing that I'm on point makes me feel mm -hmm. good about myself. All those wonderful things. Yeah, mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah, same. I yeah. yeah, what lights me up is yeah, relationships and seeing people. Even especially more even now that COVID and all that stuff, seeing mm -hmm. people seems even more special. It's like you want to hug people longer, and not too long, and tighter. And, you know, just really spend quality time. Quality time is a huge thing mm -hmm. for me. So, so let's just quickly go over those five things again. Uh, so, um, yeah. understand what's limiting us, both for ourselves personally, live limitlessly, set agreements, intentions in your relationships that support being limitless, understanding what love means to you, and making happiness your business. Those are the five. Awesome. So, um, I guess we have a little bit of homework for them sure yeah let's hear it. some actions for you to do so you heard all this right. and if you missed part of it rewind go back and watch the replay so um what we want to do we want you to have the shift we want you to feel like you're in relationships right. that feel limitless so look at what your current per and liberated. current liberated current personal and relationship liberation mm -hmm, li mm -hmm. limitations so many l words limitations are so find out for yourself what those things are so do those five things and how can i communicate this to others mm -hmm. Think right. about those two things, write them down, journal, yeah. you know. And if you find it difficult to communicate those things to other people, then what does that play there? How might you come to a better mm -hmm. uh, relationship with it? Because maybe it's difficult to announce those things because you're not yet comfortable yourself with mm -hmm. announcing them. Mm -hmm. Again, that's, you know, a perfect opportunity to work with somebody such as yourself where we are mm -hmm. going to become more familiar. So I think one of the best things about uh, psychotherapy, about talk therapy is that we articulate, we hear it, and then we can uh, find how it really resonates with us. So if it's difficult initially for us to say what we're wanting, we repeat it and we get to hear it and it becomes more digestible, more acceptable to ourselves. Mm -hmm. When it's more acceptable to ourselves, then we can communicate to others and see how they're going to be. But if we are not yet so secure, it's not to say we can't do it, but it's not going to be as fluid, as easy. Yeah, But we can, we can definitely learn to achieve a new position in there. Because mm -hmm. people aren't mind readers. Even when we've been with someone for a long time, they can't mind read. Yeah. You know, and sometimes we assume people will know what it is we want. Or they'll tell us what, <laughs> what we want. <laughs> and they may not or assume what we want and do us do something different. Which is the tricky part. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Good. Limitations, liberation and love. Yeah, fantastic. It's a wrap. So tell us what you thought. Tell us if you do your homework. We'd love to hear more in the chat and uh, suggestions for M. Suggestions for M. Mm -hmm. Do we have ideas for M? Oh yeah, we always have ideas. Mm. That's what I want to do for M. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay, everyone. Have a great Monday and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Hey there, friends. So if you want to open up a relationship, explore polyamory, or even swinging, and want to set up a secure foundation so that you can avoid some common newbie mistakes, check out our Poly Newbies digital course at courses.letstalkpolyamory forward slash poly newbies course. You can also DM us and set up time to chat or ask us any questions you have. Thanks for listening to the Let's Talk Polyamory podcast with TNA. Don't forget to subscribe and give us some love on your favorite podcasting platform. You can check out the show notes for any of the links to the courses or information we talked about today. Thanks and have a fantastic and sexy day.